green light XPS unedited case completion and cystolithopaxy 66 gram trilobar prostate in an anticoagulated patient. The following case is of a 71 year old gentleman on Coumadin for a metallic heart valve. Size of the prostate is 66 grams along with a 2 centimeter intravesical median lobe. There were also an associated three bladder stones measuring 1.5 centimeters. Note the urinary parameters with a residual of almost 425 milliliters. This gentleman had a catheter for over six months until finally he was referred to our institution for green light surgery. Here we take you within 35 minutes of the beginning of the surgery in which the floor of the prostate was cleared, followed by the patient's left lobe of the prostate. We are now following the right capsule of the prostate after making our 11 o'clock incision. From our previous publication, we make a 5 o'clock incision to a 7 o'clock incision, and this clears the floor of the adenoma tissue down to the capsule. We then make a 1 o'clock incision, which then allows the left lobe to be dropped and then treated. This leaves the left side of the patient's screen, therefore his right lobe, to be treated. This is initiated with a 11 o'clock groove, which is continued from the opposite side, and as can be seen from the beginning of this video, we follow that plane and truncate the tissue off the capsule and thereby vaporizing this. We also remove small pieces to be removed later during the procedure. Note the otherwise smooth surface, an unruptured capsule, and therefore minimal to no bleeding on this patient who is anticoagulated with an INR of over two. Note that during this case, there is minimal to absolutely no bleeding in this 71-year-old with multiple co comorbidities in which standard transurethral resection of the prostate is not even allowed. And that's why he's had his catheter for over six months. Here we are doing the final touches of the small tissue to be removed, particularly near the apex, near the sphincter, and more attentive care is needed not to injure the structure for risks of incontinence. Note the power of the XPS system to blaze through this adenomatous tissue, yet have the specificity not to go through the capsule. This is a very important feature of this laser in that it seeks red blood vessel tissue and therefore stops the capsule which is fibrous and therefore avascular and this is a li limitation of the treated tissue. Here we have a nice view of the floor down to the capsule right in front of the vera montanum. We continue to observe this large defect for any remaining tissue and there is a bit at the anterior apex. This will now need to be treated. Here we can see that the laser is pointed toward this tissue and with slow rotations the laser energy is transmitted to the tissue for vaporization. Note the tissue removal as well as the large bubbles that are formulated during this ionization process. What is nice about our published technique is the early identification of the capsule and therefore serves as a reference throughout the remainder of the surgery. No matter what size the prostate in the presence of any median lobe, note that these four points of reference, the 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 11 o'clock formation of an X demarcation serve as a great reference to the surgeon at all times in which complete tissue removal can be ensured. This remaining anterior tissue is that lying between the initial 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock grooves and therefore, we are simply following the capsule from a right to left direction to free up this tissue, either to remove it as a small piece or to take it down to the capsule. With the metallic cap and the inflow irrigation of the fiber life of this new XPS system and Moxie fiber, the fiber itself is much more durable and much more economic in that only one fiber is needed per case. Recently, the power limitation of this fiber has been increased to 650 kilojoules, which up to 200 gram prostates can be treated with the same fiber. What has also been noted that these fibers are extremely durable 
and provide the same output as the initial firing at the beginning of the surgery due to these internal constructs of the fiber and therefore preserve its integrity throughout the case. Here we continue to treat the anterior apical tissue which unfortunately there are many urologists out there that will only treat the lower segment of the prostate. Therefore on the hour clock of a watch between 3 and 9 o'clock. So therefore this lower channel will be opened leaving a large amount of anterior tissue to be remaining. And it is this tissue that over the next few years often regrows and continues to obstruct the patient and therefore the requirement of retreatment. The importance of treating this should be clear in that there is a lot of remaining anterior treat, treat, tissue to be treated particularly near the apex and in order to ensure this patient the best of care all tissues in the transition zone should be vaporized. Although there is knowledge that the two millimeter edge of the circumference of the treated adenoma space will slough over the next two to three weeks, we like to ensure that any remaining tissue be removed. The main reason for this is that the human body will need to slough off any dead or avascular tissue in order to start the process of epithelialization. Any delay in this, such as leaving behind extra tissue, will delay the healing process and lead to patient dysuria or painful urination. Better healing will occur if this area is much more smooth and all tissue has been removed. From this view, the viewer can clearly demarcate the open fossa and a smooth perimeter. While there remains some tissue, this will continue to be removed as a fine-tuning process at the end of the procedure. Note that in this patient with blood thinners such as Coumadin with an INR of over 2, there is no bleeding. This is a significant game changer in the treatment of these men with enlarged prostates. Here there remains a small stump of 12 o'clock tissue and this will be taken down with the XPS laser fiber. Once this aspect has been completed, we then look from the Vera Montanum to ensure an intact sphincter. We look in front of the Vera Montanum to ensure the presence of small stones which usually rely on the capsule. And therefore, move forward and observe the open defect of the prostate. We then continue any small fine tuning of millimetric remaining tissue that sit on the capsule just to have a smoother surface of the prosthetic fossa. Once this is complete and we were satisfied with the defect and complete tissue removal to the capsule, we can then move on to step two of the surgery, which is the laser fragmentation of the bladder stones, which were created because of incomplete bladder emptying over years, with a different laser called the holmium laser to fragment these stones. The medical term for this procedure is a cystolithopaxy. So cysto referring to a transurethral approach, therefore no cutting of the skin. Litho is a special word for stones and paxi for breaking up. So this is, will be the next step of this gentleman's procedure. What is impressive is that at this point we've stopped all irrigant. There's no inflow and observation of the camera shows that there is no bleeding. This is impressive for someone who is on a strong, powerful anticoagulant. Over the last six years of doing this procedure, I have yet to transfuse a patient for this type of technique. 
now we can see us moving with the camera into the bladder to demonstrate the small fragments of prostate tissue which were chipped off during the procedure to increase efficiency as well as the small rugated bladder stones. Through the same 24 French laser cystoscope we can then introduce this 1000 micron or one millimeter fiber the glass tip is penetrated through to touch the stone and with direct contact a separate laser called the homium laser is used to fragment like a jackhammer these stones into multiple small pieces which will then be able to be removed through this same scope. This allows for a very cost-effective procedure in this gentleman in that very little equipment is needed other than the same scope and two different laser fibers. Once we are satisfied with the small nature of the stone fragments, we can then use a special irrigation syringe to il eliminate all of the fragments of tissue as well as stone. And then one last check through the same sheath with the camera in the bladder to ensure there's no bleeding, there are no stone fragments, and there's no tissue. And only after this will we then introduce the final catheter, which will stay in place for less than 24 hours. Compared to standard TERP as well as bipolar TERP, there's no need for any bladder irrigation. A 20 French, which is a very small catheter, is instilled with three, 30 milliliters and the bladder is left to drain for less than 24 hours. Unlike conventional TURP, which is performed by over 90% of Canadian urologists and over 60% of American urologists, there's no concern for transfusion as well as electrolytic abnormalities due to the type of irrigant that's used. This allows for a much safer procedure, particularly in those with comorbidities and older age. As such, we are now able to offer our patients a much more minimally invasive surgical technique. The final image shows the color of the urine in the recovery room, which remained the same for the next 12 hours. The patient was discharged home without a catheter within 24 hours and has been seen a month later voiding extremely well. Total surgical time for this procedure was 70 minutes with 29 minutes of laser time and a total of nearly 400 kilojoules of energy. One fiber was used. As mentioned, there was no complications. There was a two to three week period of light dysuria, no further hospital uh, readmissions, and this patient never stopped his Coumadin. We thank you for your attention, and we hope you enjoyed this 